Hello, and welcome to today's ukulele lesson on the Animal Crossing New Horizons theme. I made a video for this a while ago that included the tabs, but today we're going to go a little bit more in depth and talk about all the different chords in the song and how to play them. If you haven't seen my other video yet, I recommend checking it out. Um, it's quick and it'll help you get prepared for this one. Some things before we get started, make sure you know how to read tab and make sure you know how to read chord diagrams. We're gonna be using a lot of those in this video. There's a free PDF that you can download from a link in the description and that goes along with this video, so make sure you have that too. One last thing, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss my other covers and tutorials and don't forget to say hi in the comments. All right, let's make sure our ukuleles are tuned. Here are the notes your ukulele needs to be tuned to. This is your standard high G tuning. All right, if you're all tuned up, let's get started. We're gonna start by looking at measures one through seven. This is marked section A on the downloadable PDF. The first chord in the song is the F major chord. You're probably used to seeing the F major chord played like this, but we're going to be playing a different voicing of the F major chord. The way we're gonna play F major is we're gonna play the second fret on the G string, the first fret on the E string, and the third fret on the A string. Now you might notice we have a string in the middle of this chord that has no notes on it, but we don't want to play it open like this. What we need to do is we need to mute that string. So we're gonna use our middle finger and we're gonna lightly touch that string. So if you play it by itself, it sounds like this. Sounds kind of weird, but once you play the whole chord, that little thump gets covered up by the rest of the notes and it sounds like this. This is also convenient to have your middle finger there because our next chord is F7, and the way that we're going to play that is we're going to press this finger down on the third fret. So when I'm muting this string, I like to keep my middle finger close to the third fret so that all I have to do between these chords is just squeeze that finger down. All right, let's move on to the next two chords. Next, we're gonna have the B flat major chord. I play this by barring the first fret on the E and A string with my index finger. Then I'm gonna play the second fret with my middle finger and I'm going to mute the G string with my thumb. You could also mute the G string with your ring finger. So if that's an easier hand shape for you, then feel free to do it that way. It works well too. You could also press down on the third fret. And what this is gonna do is it's going to double this note right here. So that sounds pretty good too but you're gonna have to make sure that your ukulele is well-tuned or else these two notes could clash. The next chord is called G half diminished seven. So when you see that circle with the slash through it, we call that half diminished. To play G half diminished seven, we're going to have to bar the first fret again. This time, we're going to bar three strings the E, the A, and the C string. We will leave the G string open. So here's B flat, and then G half diminished seven. Next, we're gonna play the F major chord again, 
but this time it's going to be different than the first way we played it. I like to mute the G string with my thumb and just press the first fret of the E string. But you could double this note right here and play F the more common way. After playing the F major chord, we're going to add our middle finger to the second fret of the C string and our ring finger to the second fret of the E string. This is going to create the B diminished chord. So one of the reasons I like to play that F chord without the middle finger down there is because that way I don't have to hop over with that finger to get to the B diminished. I should mention that for the B diminished chord, we're muting the G string with our thumb again. Make sure that you're not pressing your thumb over the top of the string when you're muting it, or else you might accidentally fret the string. So I like to keep it kind of on the side. Another thing to point out is that your index finger is going to be in the same place for the F major chord and the B diminished chord. So don't lift it up when you switch between the chords. Make sure you're not going like this. So believe it or not, even though we're only on measure three, we're pretty much done learning everything we need to know for section A. Let's talk about this part. This next little lick starts with an arpeggio of the B flat chord. So hold this down just like we held the B flat chord before with the first finger barring the first fret and play the strings one at a time. I like to release the pressure on each string as I go so that the note stops before the next note starts. It's kind of like you're rolling your hand as you go. This is a little bit tricky, so if you want to let the notes ring out, that's not so bad either. After that, I'm going to jump up here with my index finger on the sixth fret of the E string, and I'm going to put my ring finger on the eighth fret of the A string, and I'm going to strum all three of these strings. On the PDF, I'm calling this B flat add nine. Um, it's kind of hard. There's a lot of different things you could call this chord, but uh, it, it kind of doesn't really matter. I'm just giving it a name because I'm naming all the other chords, so why not? You could also call it a, not nah, whatever, I don't care. B flat add nine, there you go. Okay, that brings us to measures five through seven. This is the exact same thing as measures one through three, except at the end, instead of doing this, we have a different ending. It's really simple, it's only three notes. All right, so those are all the chords and the notes that we have to play in this section. Now let's talk about the timing. Describing the rhythm for this section, I'm going to be counting like this. One, and two, and three, and four, and. And I'm going to tell you when to strum or play a note based on that counting pattern. So as far as strumming patterns go, I'm going to strum down any time a chord lands on one, two, three, or four. And I'm going to strum up when a chord lands on and. So we're gonna be continuously moving our hand a little bit like this. One and two and three and four and. All right, now I'm going to play through the entirety of section A and I'm going to count along. One, two, 
three, four. One and two and three and four and 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 who that's the rhythm for section A. <laughs> All right, on to section B. This is going to be measures eight through 13. The great thing about section B is that there's only two different chords that you have to play. However, both of them are bar chords, so it could take a little bit of practice if you're still a beginner. The first chord we're gonna play is D flat major. The way we play D flat major is you're going to press down all of the strings at the first fret with your first finger in a bar like that. Then you need to press the fourth fret of the A string with your pinky. Make sure you really curve your pinky and use the tip of it in order to hold both of these at the same time. If your pinky is too flat and you find yourself out like this, then your whole hand is gonna go kind of sideways and your first finger won't be able to hold down all those strings at once. So make sure you're really using the tip and really curving that finger like that. This is a really useful chord shape. In fact, you can play a lot of chords like this. It's called a movable chord shape. Basically, uh, you could play pretty much any major chord like this if you know the right place to put it. So it's worth practicing this chord, even if, yeah, it's worth practicing this chord. All right, let's look at the next chord. This is C minor. We're gonna play C minor by barring the third fret of the C, E, and A strings. And you can also add the open G down here that's going to double this note on the E string. So that's it for those two chords. It's just D flat major and C minor. An interesting thing about this section is you should really play all of these as upstrums because they all fall on the ands when we're counting. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Notice I like to keep my right hand moving like this to kind of help me keep the beat and keep track of when I want to go down and up. This is the part of the song where the guitar comes in and the guitar is playing that ascending pattern. Uh, it's going da 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 da. And on that high note, that's where the ukulele strums along with the guitar. So it kind of goes like da 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 da. Let's talk about the notes that are at the end of this section. Let's take a closer look at those notes and I'll show you the fingers that I like to use to play them. I like to start with my index finger. This is for the third fret of the E string. Then I'm playing a lot of notes on the fifth fret, but I'm not using the same finger for all of them. Here's what I do. I use my ring finger for that note. I go down here to the C string with my middle finger and then move my ring finger up to the A string, still on the fifth fret. And then I play the third fret of that string with my index finger. And then I go back down to the E string with my ring finger on the fifth fret. And then down to the C string with my middle finger on the fifth fret. So, so just to summarize here, I'm playing all the notes that are on the fifth fret with my middle and ring finger. 
After that, I shift down to the second fret and I use my middle finger for that so that my index finger is ready for this slide right here. You'll notice that that slide starts on the first fret. So by playing this note with my middle finger, it puts my index finger in position for that. Here's a really important piece of advice for doing that slide. Try to make sure that your thumb stays in the same place when you do it. Don't find yourself sliding your thumb with your whole hand like that, or you might not be as accurate as you want to be. You could find yourself going a little too far or not far enough. Try to get the muscle memory for this by keeping your thumb anchored in the same place. All right, let's play through that whole section now. One and two and three and four and 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 so it's important to talk about the fact that the ukulele is just one instrument in the mix of this whole song. So uh, there's a lot going on around the ukulele in this part. And when we play this section by itself on the ukulele, it might not really sound a whole lot like the original, but this is what the ukulele is doing in the original. There's really only two chords in this section as well. We have the F major chord, and what we call F sus4. F sus4 can be played with a bar like that, but since we're going to be switching back and forth between them so much, I like to use two different fingers so that I can easily lift off and put down my middle finger. The whole time I'm muting the G string with my thumb, and I'm holding down the E string at the first fret. So what I would recommend is making sure you're, you're able to go back and forth between these chords really easily. And then try to put it into the right strumming pattern for the song. There is a long pause between section B and section C. So the way that you're gonna know when to come back in is by taking a cue from the horn. So the horn comes in on beat two, and then the ukulele comes in on beat four. So when you hear the horn start to play the lead melody there, that's beat two. It's kind of like this. One, two, three, four, one. Okay. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and four and. All right, it's time to talk about section D. This goes from measure 19 to 23. There's a lot of different chords in this section. We start out with the A major chord. If you're familiar with the A major chord, this is probably the voicing that you already know, where we have the second fret with the middle finger on the G string, the first fret with the index finger on the C string, and then the other two strings open. Then we're gonna move to the D major seven chord. This is a lot like what we played in section B with the D flat major chord where we had a bar and then the pinky, uh, but it, it's a little bit different. Let's take a look. We're gonna bar the second fret with our index finger and then instead of pressing with the pinky, we're gonna use our ring finger to press down on the fourth fret of the A string. Once again, make sure you're using the tip of your ring finger 
and not the flatter part like that, or it's gonna put your hand in a very difficult shape. Another little tip about bar chords, make sure when you're doing bar chords, your thumb isn't sticking out like this. Try to position it so that the pad of your thumb is on the center of the back of the neck. So that's our D major seven chord. This is a very good shape to be familiar with because uh, you can move it around, play a lot of different chords. So it's a very useful chord shape. After the D major seven, we're gonna play B minor seven. So all you're gonna do is just lift up this ring finger and you're gonna have all of the strings barred with your first finger at the second fret. Make sure when you're switching between D major seven and B minor seven that you don't lift up this finger. So make sure you don't go like this. Make sure you keep it down. The next chord is, we're gonna call it B diminished seven because uh, there's some other names that you could call it, but this is the one that most people are probably familiar with for this chord. Some people like to play this chord like this using all four of these fingers, but uh, I, I like to use my thumb for it. Uh, you probably notice I like to use my thumb for a lot of chords, but it also the way that I do it works really well to transition to the next chord in this song. So here's what I do. I play the first fret of the G string with my thumb and I put the rest of my fingers here. This is, this is kind of like a G7 chord basically. So if you know your G7 chord, then all you gotta do is add the thumb on the first fret and there you go. I think this is really the easiest way to approach the, the B diminished seven chord. And it works really well in this song because then all we're gonna do for the next chord is we're just gonna have to move these three fingers over. So let's take a look at that next chord. We're going to go to F sharp minor. This is a lot like the G7 chord. So if you know your G7 chord, it goes like this. Just take all of those fingers and move them over a string. So instead of being on these strings, move them all up one like that. And there's your F sharp minor chord. Next, we're gonna play G add nine. This is another bar chord. There's a lot of bar chords in section D. We're gonna bar the second fret and we're gonna put your middle finger on the third fret, but this time it's gonna be on the E string. So second fret, third fret, second fret, second fret. The next little bit is pretty simple. It's just one note at a time. It's all on the E string. It's the fifth fret, the third fret, and then the first fret. All right, let's talk about the chord that this song ends on. In the original, I really only hear the ukulele playing these three notes. Actually, that's only two notes because this one is doubled. If you want, you could add this note up at the top. It's a, it's a kind of nicer ending chord for the song, but uh, in my original video, I only included these notes because those are the only ones I can say for sure the ukulele is really playing. This uh, C right here is definitely being played by, I think, the accordion, but you could double it on the ukulele if you want, especially if you're playing this by yourself and you just want a prettier ending, you know, that's a little bit weak. And when you add this other note in there, definitely sounds uh, a lot nicer. So feel free to add that in there. It's not, I don't think it's in the original, but uh, you know, this is, this is your cover. You can do whatever you want. So I guess if we add that note, then uh, we're playing a, a G sus4 chord. But without that note, we would call it G5, also known as the G power chord. All right, let's play through the D section. Here we go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and 
one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so now on to section E. This actually wasn't in my original playthrough video because when I made that video, uh, the game wasn't actually out yet. So I was just going off of what was in the trailers. But um, there is one more little section here. It kind of connects the song back to the beginning. The song plays through twice and this kind of happens in the middle. So here's that little connect connecting section. This is measures 24 through 27. So this is a lot like the beginning of the song. We're gonna start with an F major chord, but we're gonna actually play it a little bit differently. This is partly because I think it works a little bit better in this section this way. And also, uh, if you want, you actually can play this chord like this for the first, the first chord of the song. You can play it like this. It's the same exact notes. So here's how it was in the beginning of the song. And you'll see I'm putting my fingers in a different place, but it's the same notes. So I just bar the fifth fret um, on these three strings, the G, the C, and the E string. And you can either mute this string by just kind of letting your finger lightly touch it, or you can try to bend up and play it open but uh, that's not really gonna add anything to the chord. So I just kind of let it be muted. Just make sure you're not pressing it down there or you're gonna get this chord. And we don't want that. We just want these three strings to, to ring out. After that, we're going to play something very similar to the second chord in the song. Um, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have our, our thumb on the Actually, you could use your thumb or your middle finger. I'll show you both ways. Here's how I do it. I use my thumb on the second fret, then my ring finger on the third fret of the C, and my index finger on the first fret of the E string. And you can leave the A string open for this if you want. That's just gonna double this note down here. Instead of using your thumb, if, you, if you'd prefer, you could use your middle finger here. So. Or whatever works better for you. After that, we're gonna play the B flat major chord. And this is the same way, this is the same chord from the beginning of the song. And this whole section is a lot like the beginning of the song, but I'll just use this opportunity to show you some alternate fingerings that you can use in the beginning of the song if you want. So uh, in the beginning of the song, we played B flat major like this. We muted, we muted the G string but you could also add your ring finger down here. So after the B flat chord, we're gonna play the F sus four chord. We had this chord in the C section, but this time all we're gonna do is we're gonna go from the B flat and we're gonna lift up your middle finger so we get that open C in there. So that's it. We pretty much are just gonna play those chords twice, uh, but let's take a look at the rhythms now. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and four and. All right, well, that just about does it for this lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, yeah, click on some stuff. Cool. Bye.